The Texas law not only bans abortions uh, six weeks in, and as many people have pointed out, it often takes more than six weeks for a woman to become aware that she's pregnant, let alone uh, come up with a plan for how to respond to that. The Texas law also provides a $10,000 bounty if you report someone to the local authorities because you think they may be seeking an abortion after six weeks. How, of course, you would know which of your neighbors is doing such a thing, uh, I will leave to your imagination. But it becomes the strictest anti-abortion law in the United States. So let's talk about the economics of this. Number one, to force a woman or a set of parents to bring to term and raise a child under the law of the United States, makes those persons responsible for that child for the next 18 years, basically. You are therefore compelling a subordination of women. And I say women because women still do the overwhelming bulk of child care in our society. I find this remarkable as an economist because I'm also hearing some of the same political forces that are doing this complain about a labor shortage. Well, you haven't seen anything yet. You're forcing women across this country who become pregnant to leave whatever jobs they may have had in order to do what? Obey the law and raise their children. Their choice not to do that, to, to work instead of raising children, has been denied in Texas, and the labor shortage is going to get worse. may not show up right away, but it will, and pretty soon. It subordinates women. It puts them back into the role of household, mother, not by choice, not by working out some compromise of multiple objectives, but by force of government intrusion. The same people who don't want to lose their freedom to infect other people with a disease by not getting vaccinated or wearing a mask have no problem with the government coming in to impose way more restrictions on freedom than ever they had to deal with before. Next, the Federal Reserve in this country does a survey, and the survey it does it every year. How many families could handle an unexpected $400 expense, and how many families could handle an unexpected $1,000 expense? And they come up with stunning numbers. A majority of American families cannot come up with a $1,000 unexpected expense without either selling something they own or taking on another job. Hmm. A child costs way more than any of that. How are American families, currently income restricted, possibly going to do this? And what are you doing imposing this expense upon them? Because remember, the same people who impose a pregnancy being taken to term are very stingy when it comes to providing social supports for the child after it's born. They're the ones who want to cut food stamps, support for education, medical coverage. What a strange spectacle of economic contradiction. It condemns children to be the children who weren't wanted. And that's a very big burden to put on a child just as it's an enormous burden to put on the parents. And the outcomes we know from the history of psychology for thousands of years, this story doesn't end well. It ends up with children and parents overstressed, under-equipped, therefore with medical, physical, and mental problems, schooling problems, crime, the end long list of social problems we're making worse. And finally, 
rich people will always find a way, if they're in Texas, to leave Texas to get the abortion somewhere else. They always have, they will again. So who is most affected by this? The people with the least amount of wealth. So you know what it's gonna do? Make this country even more unequal than it is now. Those are the economic realities that are being pretended away in this debate.